So in this next little video, we're going to take a look at area of operation, parachute alterations, that's section seven, and it only applies to master riggers. The task we're going to look at is altering a riser connector. The reference material used for this are Dan Pointer's parachute manuals, and because I don't understand the uh, fair use rules, I'm not going to give you direct pictures, but I will recommend that uh, these are good books to have in your library of rigging books. Uh, so the objective is to determine that the applicant demonstrates alternate a riser L links to rapid links by, number one, ensuring approved data is available. Well, I just told you where to find that. Two, selecting replacement links. Three, inspecting the new link. Four, removing stitches that parallel the L link across the top of the riser. 5. Folding in the corners of the riser. 6. Orientating the rapid link to the proper operating position. 7. Hand tacking riser webbing. 8. Torque the rapid link. So here we go. You're going to start out with a riser that's been made to accept an L bar. And we're going to end up by removing that row of stitching, being able to put a rapid link in and tack it. The reference is pointer's manual. And be careful when you're removing that top row of stitching that you don't accidentally damage any of the point stitches. So take your seam ripper and being careful not to dig into the webbing, only get in the thread, start breaking out the five cord that's holding that top row of stitching in place. Take it easy, you're not in a hurry. If you want, you can also use an awl to pull on the stitches if you start getting a bit wigged out using something that cuts near the riser. It takes a bit of force, but you can pull the stitches out, and you just work from side to side, breaking each stitch as you go. As I've already said, once you get closer to the points, be careful. I generally stop yeah, about a stitch before it in reality, that way I know I don't hit them, and I've still got enough space to do the folds. Trim out your thread. So take a lighter now and just sear the ends of those threads so they don't look ungainly and unsightly. Try not to burn the risers, obviously. And be reinspect the points to make sure you didn't damage anything accidentally. You can now remove the piece of type 12 that's in there as a chafing strip for the L link. Next thing you want to do is inspect your new rapid link. You're checking for any burrs or damage and you want to make sure that the barrel rotates at least two and three quarter turns uh, up the thread and that it moves smoothly. You can clean your new link with trichloroethylene or electrical contact cleaner. Give it a spray, give it a wipe off. Notice this is a Malian Rapide link, uh, and it has a safe working load specified on it. Don't use cheap hardware store links. Malian Rapide, and I'm seeing Kong is another uh, brand of links that are being used in skydiving, but please be careful that you're using the right thing. You now fold the webbing into center, and then place your link on it so that the barrel end slips through the loop, leaving the thread end towards the canopy.
if we were talking this length now, we'd go hand tight plus a quarter turn. That's kind of industry standard. Don't overdo it or you'll damage the shoulder of the thread. If you want to get fancy dancy, you can use a torque wrench and the correct torque is 20 to 30 inch pounds. Please make sure you use a calibrated wrench or you could be off by a bit. If you are going to use SuperTac to tack your thread in place, I'm going to show you one of the few tricks I have. Take the end of your SuperTac, pass it through the needle, and then impale the SuperTac about two inches from the end and just pull it on like so, and put a knot in the end so that it doesn't uh, pull all the way through when you start attaching it. Now the thing the tack does is it keeps the link orientated correctly so it doesn't become side loaded. Obviously it has to be uh, orientated as you can see right now for it to work correctly. Chase the tack down through the riser and by reducing that um, area for it to move in it stops its ability to cock on you. Take a piece of rubber and pull on the needle. I'll stop you from digging holes in your hand. Pull it through, and then also if you like uh, if you like buying tools, if you're that kind of guy, you can buy yourself one of these uh, sewing palms, also referred to as a sailor's palm, and that allows you to push a needle. It's not really necessary for this job. And again, pull on it with your piece of rubber. We'll now tie it off with a surgeon's knot. And when we trim them out, oh, with a lock knot, sorry. And when we trim them out, we'll leave a, a tail of at least about an inch on these so that they don't just unravel on us. So it reduces its ability to do that while it's sat in the reserve container. So now let's take more of a macro look at the orientation of the links. Typically the openings are facing inside with the threads towards the canopy, barrels towards the container. Now certainly some instructions have you orientate them with the openings all one way or the short side down. Just make sure you do it in accordance with the manual and no side loading. So let's have a review. Did we ensure that approved data is available? Yep, we found it in Pointer's manual. Did we select a replacement link? Yep, Malion Rapid link of the appropriate size. Did we inspect the new link to make sure that it would go at least two and three quarter turns on the thread and that there were no dings or burrs or damage? Uh, did we remove the stitch in that parallels the L link across the top of the riser without damaging the points? And then fold the riser into center place the Rapid link on the riser as we've just discussed with the openings facing in, thread side towards canopy, and then hand tack the riser web in to reduce the link's ability to fall to its side and side load. And then we torque the Rapid link uh, to about 20 to 30 inch pounds or um, a hand tight plus a quarter turn. Well, I hope that video was some help to uh, those of you preparing for your tests. And I want to take a second at the end of this video just to thank Ray Farrell. Ray Farrell was one of the first people in skydiving to show me that it was okay not to perpetuate the bullshit that you've heard from other people. And I know he lost a lot of friends for that, and I don't think he cares, which is awesome. So thanks very much, Ray, for being one of the leaders in our sport, as always. And a lot of people don't realize this, but you probably wouldn't have an RSL on your rig if it wasn't for him, but I'll let him tell that story. And let's hope that with a little bit of good vibes in the world, we can get rid of this backbiting that our business is uh, full of. See ya.